Badgers are primarily nocturnal animals, meaning they are most active during the night. They have excellent night vision, which helps them forage for food in low light conditions. They are omnivores, feeding on a wide range of foods. Their diet can vary depending on the availability of food in their environment. They are generally social animals and often live in family groups within their sets. These groups consist of adults and their young, and they share responsibilities such as grooming and protecting the set. Badgers are territorial animals and mark their territories using scent markings. This helps to avoid conflicts with neighboring groups. Similar to other badgers, the Japanese badger's diet is omnivorous and are found in a variety of woodland and forest habitats. The absence of badgers from Hokkaido suggests that the ancestral badgers reached Japan from the southwest via Korea. Genetic studies indicate that there are substantial differences between Japanese and Asian badgers, which were formerly considered conspecific, and that the Japanese badgers are genetically more homogeneous. Honey badgers are known for their remarkable courage and fearlessness. They are known to take on animals much larger and more dangerous than themselves, including lions and leopards. They are skilled hunters and scavengers. They use their sharp claws to dig out prey from burrows or termite mounds. They are also capable of breaking into beehives to get to the honey and bee larvae. They have several defense mechanisms. Their strong skin provides protection against bites, while their powerful jaws and teeth allow them to fight off attackers. They can emit a strong and foul-smelling odor from their anal glands, which deters predators. They are generally solitary creatures, and they mark their territories with scent markings. They are known for their independence and territorial behavior. Wolverines are solitary animals and are known for their vast territories, which they mark with scent markings. They are excellent climbers and swimmers, allowing them to traverse a variety of landscapes in search of food. They are opportunistic feeders. Their diet includes a wide range of food, such as small mammals, birds, eggs, berries and even larger prey like deer or moose when the opportunity arises. They are known for their exceptional scavenging skills. They can locate and dig up buried carcasses beneath layers of snow, which provides them with a valuable food source, especially in winter. They have a slow reproductive rate. Female wolverines give birth to small litters, usually consisting of one to five kits. The kits are born blind and helpless, and they remain with their mother for an extended period of time before becoming independent. Wolverines hold cultural significance in some indigenous societies. They are considered symbols of strength, adaptability, and resourcefulness. The diet of the American marten is omnivorous and varies by season, but relies chiefly on small mammals like voles. They are solitary except during the midsummer breeding season. Embryonic implantation is delayed until late winter, however, with a litter of one to five kits born the following spring. Young stay with the mother in a constructed den until the fall and reach sexual maturity by one year old. Their sable-like fur made them a thoroughly trapped species during the height of the North American fur trade. Trapping peaked in 1820, and populations were depleted until after the turn of the century. Enhydrictus was a fairly large, robust terrestrial mustelid. When first described, it was considered to be an otter-like species adapted to an aquatic lifestyle, 
but studies on the limb bones do not support such claims. Before the arrival of humans on the islands in about 8000 before Christ, during the Middle and Late Pleistocene, Corsica and Sardinia had their own highly endemic depauperate terrestrial mammal fauna. The striped polecat is a solitary creature, often only associating with other members of its species in small family groups or for the purpose of breeding. It is nocturnal, hunting mostly at night. During the day, it burrows into the brush or sleeps in the burrows of other animals. Most often, striped polecats are found in habitats with large ungulate populations, because of the lower level of shrubs where these grazers occur. European polecats have a slender body, short legs, and a long tail. They are mostly nocturnal, which means they are most active during the night. This behavior helps them avoid human activity and potential predators. They are solitary animals and mark their territories using scent markings. They are known for their strong odor, which serves both for communication and defense. Polecats play a role in controlling rodent populations, which can have ecological and agricultural benefits. They can hybridize with domestic ferrets, leading to a phenomenon known as polecat-ferret hybrids. This can result in genetic introgression and impact the genetic purity of wild polecat populations. Sardinian giant otter was one of the largest otters, reaching lengths of over 2 meters, slightly bigger than the modern South American giant river otter. Its crushing teeth indicate it specialized in crunching through hard-shelled invertebrates like mollusks and crustaceans, and its highly flexible backbone and flattened tail suggest it was a strong swimmer that may have been even more aquatic than most other otters. It was possibly an equivalent of the modern sea otter, spending most of its time in the water, although it's not clear whether it was a river or marine species. Unlike most marine mammals, the sea otter's primary form of insulation is an exceptionally thick coat of fur, the densest in the animal kingdom. Although it can walk on land, the sea otter is capable of living exclusively in the ocean. The sea otter inhabits nearshore environments, where it dives to the sea floor to forage. It preys mostly on marine invertebrates such as sea urchins, various mollusks and crustaceans, and some species of fish. Its foraging and eating habits are noteworthy in several respects. Its use of rocks to dislodge prey and to open shells makes it one of the few mammal species to use tools. In most of its range, it is a keystone species, controlling sea urchin populations which would otherwise inflict extensive damage to kelp forest ecosystems. Its diet includes prey species that are also valued by humans as food, leading to conflicts between sea otters and fisheries. The Eurasian otter has a diet mainly of fish, and is strongly territorial. It is endangered in some parts of its range, but is recovering in others. It declined across its range in the second half of the 20th century primarily due to pollution from pesticides such as organochlorine and polychlorinated biphenyls. Other threats included habitat loss and hunting, both legal and illegal. Eurasian otter populations are now recovering in many parts of Europe. In the United Kingdom, the number of sites with an otter presence increased by 55% between 1994 and 2002. This otter differs from the North American river otter by its shorter neck, broader visage, the greater space between the ears and its longer tail. The Asian small-clawed otter lives in riverine habitats, freshwater wetlands and mangrove swamps. It feeds on mollusks, crabs and other small aquatic animals. It lives in pairs, but was also observed in family groups with up to 12 individuals. When swimming on the surface, otters row with the forelimbs and paddle with the hind limbs. When diving underwater, they undulate their bodies and tails. 
The Asian small-clawed otter is threatened by poaching for its fur, loss and destruction of habitats such as hill streams, peat swamp forests and mangroves for aquaculture projects. Cretan otter was a close relative of the modern smooth-coated otter. Its skeleton shows features associated with walking and running more than swimming, and it seems that this was something of a land otter, still able to swim, but spending most of its time on land similar to the modern small-clawed otter. Shellfish were likely still the main part of its diet, indicated by its crushing teeth. But it probably also regularly ate whatever small terrestrial vertebrates it could catch. Striped skunks are polygamous omnivores with few natural predators, save for birds of prey. Like all skunks, they possess highly developed musk-filled scent glands to ward off predators. They have a long history of association with humans, having been trapped and captively bred for their fur and kept as pets. It is one of the most recognizable of North America's animals, and is a popular figure in cartoons and children's books. S. One of the major carriers of the rabies virus, second only to raccoons in the United States where skunks are 25% of annual cases. Though related to raccoons and coatis, Chapalmelania was a large creature, reaching about 1.5 meters in body length, with a short tail. Is thought to have had an omnivorous diet similar to modern bears based on dental morphology. Bite marks attributable to Chapalmelania have been found on a glyptodont carcass and have been interpreted as scavenging behavior, suggesting that it also fed on carrion of large mammals on at least some occasions. Raccoon's grayish coat mostly consists of dense underfur, which insulates it against cold weather. Three of the raccoon's most distinctive features are its extremely dexterous front paws, its facial mask, and its ringed tail, which are themes in the mythologies of the indigenous peoples of the Americas relating to the animal. The raccoon is noted for its intelligence, as studies show that it is able to remember the solution to tasks for at least three years. It is usually nocturnal and omnivorous, eating about 40% invertebrates, 33% plants and 27% vertebrates. The original habitats of the raccoon are deciduous and mixed forests, but due to their adaptability, they have extended their range to mountainous areas, coastal marshes, and urban areas, where some homeowners consider them to be pests. Although captive raccoons have been known to live over 20 years, their life expectancy in the wild is only 3 years. Kinkajous are primarily nocturnal, they have large round eyes that help them see well in low light conditions. They are also well adapted to life in trees. They have a prehensile tail, which means they can use it to grasp branches and move around with agility in the canopy. They feed on a mix of fruits, nectar, insects and small vertebrates. Their long tongue helps them access nectar from flowers. They are generally solitary animals, but they can be social within family groups. They communicate with each other using vocalizations, scent markings, and body language. The red panda was first formally described in 1825. Its place on the evolutionary tree has been debated, but modern genetic evidence places it in close affinity with raccoons. It is not closely related to the giant panda, which is a bear, though both possess elongated wrist bones or false thumbs used for grasping bamboo. The evolutionary lineage of the red panda stretches back around 25 to 18 million years ago, as indicated by extinct fossil relatives found in Eurasia and North America. It inhabits coniferous forests as well as temperate broadleaf and mixed forests, 
favoring steep slopes with dense bamboo cover close to water sources. It is solitary and largely arboreal. It feeds mainly on bamboo shoots and leaves, but also on fruits and blossoms. It is threatened by poaching as well as destruction and fragmentation of habitat due to deforestation.